So, anyways, um, how this revision session is going to go will be something like this. I'm going to go through very quickly with you what are the things you need to know, all right? And then we jump straight into practicing, okay? So, so uh, because all of you learned it before. So it's not like you never learned it before. I just want to highlight some stuff. Uh, make sure you know this quite well before we actually start doing. Okay, so as we are doing, 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 then hopefully you'll get better as you move along. Okay, the questions that I chose are uh, exams questions. So definitely uh, it's of a certain standard. So if you can do those, that'll be awesome. Okay, so come, let's talk about binomial theorem. All right, so there are three things you need to know uh, in order to do well in your binomial theorem topic. Okay, uh, the first thing is uh, the theorem itself. So this is uh, the formula, the binomial theorem formula, uh, which is uh, what you should see in your formula list or whatnot in textbooks and all. so on. So basically it looks a bit like this. Uh, if you simplify it a little bit, it looks a bit like this. Okay, so this is the version that I would want you to so-called uh, remember. Okay, now you don't really have to memorize the whole thing, but the idea is if you've done enough work, you should remember this. Okay, so, so let's talk a bit about the feature. Okay, binomial, as the term implies, uh, you have two things inside the bracket they're going to expand. Okay, so only two. We have what I like to call the front side and the back side. Uh, hmm, front term, back term, if you like. Okay, so the A and the B. So the idea is that if you, if you study the, the pattern, right, it's not hard to tell uh, that the power of the front and the back um, is actually related. All right, in the sense that your A will always have the full power first, okay, then the B actually got zero power. As you can see, as the term moves along, the A transfer the power to B. So the A reduce power by one, the B gains one. The, B, uh, the A reduce one more, the B gains one more, and so on. All the way until the end where A becomes zero power and then the B becomes full power. All right, so you can see that A start with full power, B start with zero, and then it slowly transfer, transfer, all the way until the last term. Okay, so that's, that's how the pattern is like. Then, of course, we have this other component that's called the binomial coefficient. Right? This is your NC0, NC1, NC2, NC3, and so on and so forth. Okay, what you probably, the only thing you want to know is that NC0 is 1, uh, NCN is 1. Okay, so for those of you who are here for the, 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 the first lecture on binomial theorem, you should know that uh, we talk about something about the Pascal's triangle. So the Pascal triangle always end, uh, start with first, uh, which is 1, and end with 1. So, so basically, that's the 1 and the 1. So, so in some sense, you, you, the first term of the binomial theorem is actually quite simple. It's just the A with the full power. That's it. Okay? And then, of course, the last term is also very simple, which is just the B with the full power. That's it. Okay? So, so the first term, there's no reason you don't know or you need calculator. There's no need for calculator at all. So that's the kind of uh, confidence I want you to display. I want you to know, hey, I, I, I know immediately the first, first term, the second term, maybe the third term. Okay? Now, then... Of course, this is NC0, this NC1, right? So, of course, most of the time, we just use, just use calculator. Okay, but, like I said, if you've done enough questions, you should realize that NC1 is N. Okay? So, to some extent, you, you've done enough, you will remember. Okay? It's like memory work, or somehow we memorize already, kind of a feel. Okay? So, uh, NC1 is N. Okay? Uh, 2C2 is 2. Uh, 3C, uh, sorry, 2C1 uh, is 2. Anything C1 is just that anything, okay? Of course, uh, NC2 onwards, you better use calculator. Are we all right? So this is the theorem that helps you expand everything. A few things you do want to know. Number one, N must be a positive integer, okay? Which is something like that, what we call natural numbers. Natural numbers would be like numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth, okay? So N must be positive integer. The other thing is that uh, when fully expanded, you're expecting to have N plus 1 terms all together. Okay, which is not hard to fully understand as well because imagine this is 2, which is what we call a square. And then when you fully expand it, you've got three terms only, right? Which is your a square, 2ab, b square. Okay, so if this is like power 10, then fully expand it, you've got 11 terms. So this is the binomial theorem itself. Of course, you need to know how to use it. You need to know it a little bit better besides just knowing how to use it. Okay, so uh, the theorem is given in formula list. That's the very good news. But the, the thing is that you, you probably really want to be really, really good at this. Okay, so this is the most basic stuff. All right, um, so basically the thing I just mentioned are all here, all the notes here. Okay, so you probably just, okay, okay, make some notes if you like. All right, the second formula that you need to be uh, familiar with in your binomial theorem chapter will be this is what we call the general term formula. In fact, this is more important than the first one. Uh, but I can't say that the first one is not important because most of the time they ask you to expand first. 
Then after that, they ask you to do something else, which is a part two or part three or whatever. Okay, so this is the more, uh, I would say, the more challenging kind of question. It's not just expanding the first three terms and so on, okay? So this is what we call the general term formula. Some school teachers like to call it the R plus 1 term, all right, uh, which you probably can understand why later on. The idea is uh, you don't have to expand the full binomial theorem just to find the fifth term, for example. Let's say I want the 13th term. It doesn't make sense to expand every single term then just to discard away the 12th term in front, right? Then to get the 13th. doesn't make sense. So can I just go straight ahead and find the 13th term? The answer is yes. All right, how do I do that? Well, uh, if you study the binomial theorem as well as the position number, okay? Uh, and then you can see that there's a certain pattern that uh, is uh, quite clear there. So what do I mean by the certain pattern? Well, I highlighted for you. So you can see that the B's power, which is the power of B, uh, is always the same as the NCR, the, the number here, right? which is like if this is NC0, that will be B power 0. Okay? Uh, if this is NC1, this will be B power 1. Uh, NC2, that will be B power 2. Right? You can, that's the pattern, right? You go like, oh, okay, okay. So, so, so uh, yep, makes sense. All right? Now, the other thing is, of course, if you know the power of B, then you should know the power of A. Right? The reason being the two powers add together will always be 1. Uh, sorry, will always be N. Okay? So n being the original power. So, so imagine this is 10, right? Then this will be 10, 0. Then this will be 9, 1. And this will be 8, 2. You see? They always add up to be 10. That's the idea, okay? So, so if you know the power of b, you will then naturally know the power of a. Okay, that's cool, but this time I still don't understand how am I going to find the 13th term, for example. So the idea goes like this, right? Then uh, you, you start to see that uh, the position number Obviously, you must relate back to the position number, right? So you start to look around and you see that uh, this is T1, which is the first time. I don't see any number 1 here. I see T2, but I don't see any number 2 here. I see T3, and I don't see any number 3 here as well. But you see something close to that, right? And that's when you're talking about the first term, this is NC0. When you're talking about the second term, this is NC1. When you're talking about the third term, this will be NC2. Right, so you realize that the position number is related to the NCR, the number at the bottom. Well, they are not the same number, but it's just one less. In a sense, you probably not understand that, wait a minute, if I have, let's say, a binomial theorem that looks like this, power 100 maybe, let's be a bit more exaggerating. So I'm looking for the, what's that, 13th term, correct? Okay, so, so I don't want to expand everything. So if I want to find the T13, it turns out that it's not that hard anymore now that I know the pattern, right? So T13 will be 100 C12. Agree? Not hard to see why, right? Because if this is term 2, this will be NC1. Term 3, this will be NC2. So your term 13, there will be NC12. One less than the position number. So that will be 100 C12. And I have my first term, uh, or rather the front term, and I have my back term as well. So, according to the pattern that I just described to you, if I know that this is 12, I will know that the power of y, which is the back term, must be 12. And therefore, this must be 88. And there you go, that's the 13th term. Okay? So, in general, what we say that uh, the t, the term r plus 1, the r plus 1 term, that's why the formula says r plus 1 term, uh, will be ncr, okay, because it's always one less. It's like 13 term, then this will be nc12. Agree? So that's why it's called a uh, tr plus 1. But some people, they may be a bit confused. They say, Mr. Hang, why, why this term must be called r plus 1? Why can't it be just tr? Okay, yes, it can be. I mean, if you want, want to write a formula as tr, of course you can. But then this will be ncr minus 1. And then this will be a, b, the b power will be r minus 1. And then the a power will be n minus r minus 1, right? And you go like, oh, okay, it looks a lot more complicated. Okay? So in order to make the formula look a little bit more humane, then probably you just change it to position number r plus 1. Okay? That, that will make your life a bit easier to see here, right? Because the r, that's r, that's n minus r. Very simple. Rather than looking at this, you go like, oh, suddenly it looks very hard. Okay? So, so the idea is to get to know this formula very well. Uh, this is also the formula that uh, you will use in order for you to find any other term. For example, like if you want to find the term independent of x, that's a very common question. Uh, you want to find the term with x squared, or you want to find the term with 
Well, basically, you just want to find a particular term, okay, without the need to expand everything, all right? Because sometimes it doesn't make sense to expand everything. Are we good? Can all right. So this is the second formula, which is important enough to help you score most of the marks. I would say if you can master the first two things, the first two skill sets uh, that I just described to you, you probably can score quite well for your binomial theorem all the time. Okay about 90% of the time, the question that comes out, you can get full marks already. I was dare say that. So there comes the 10% of the question, uh, which is, well, probably the harder version, the harder type of questions uh, when it comes to binomial theorem. And that is the NCR formula. Okay, now, the, uh, I, I think you should be quite familiar, right? You see, in the, in the notes and in the textbooks, when you see the NCR, it's always displayed this way. But when I do my working and when I write my uh, working, I always write as this way but they are the same meaning, okay? Just don't confuse this with vectors, all right? It, it may look like a column vector, it looks like a matrix as well, but don't, they are not, okay? So it's a notation, they like to recycle notations. But this used to be the old notation, this is a newer one. Uh, I, I prefer this, really, okay? Uh, but uh, this is uh, very hard to uh, type out nowadays, but anyway. Okay, just so you know, uh, don't confuse, when I, when I write this, I mean this, okay? Anyway, so there's a formula for this. Meaning to say, when you try to do the calculation for this, right? Normally, we just use calculator and we don't care. But the fact of the matter is that there's a formula for this one that we can actually do it without using calculator, okay? And the third skill set that you need to be, uh, you need to master in order to master the entire topic called binomial theorem, and that will be this formula. All right, now, the formula looks kind of scary and intimidating, okay? So let me show you. It looks like this. Uh, again, I do hope you know what does this mean. This uh, means factorial. It doesn't mean you talk, uh, you you shout the n out louder, n you know, like much louder. So it just simply means n factorial. Okay. Uh, now this is the version that you will see in your formula list. This is the version that you will also see in the formula list. Okay. So formula is quite nice. Okay. But the idea is, this is the simplified version compared to that. Okay. So and and in fact, this is the version that we want to uh, learn how to use. Okay. Instead of that. Now, you may then argue that Mr. this doesn't look a lot easier. I mean, it doesn't look simpler. It looks worse. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that, uh, well, because of all so many factorial, uh, you probably had a hard time trying to figure this out anyway. Okay, so uh, once you figure this out and you realize a lot of things will be cancelled away, it becomes like this. So, instead of talking about how to deal with this, you probably just want to know how to deal with this. Okay? Um, now, what is going on here? Okay, first of all, there are two components in this formula. There's a numerator and there's a denominator. That's pretty obvious, okay? Now, the denominator is the easy one. It goes like this. And it goes like, okay, when this is R, there'll be R factorial. That's like, okay, pretty simple. All right, now, the numerator is the one that's a bit hard. Okay, because, well, main thing is this, right? You go like, oh, what does it mean? Okay, in, in, in mathematics, this dot, dot, dot usually means that there's a pattern and there's a sequence that follow on until something happens. So if they never give you the last term, it means they follow on until the end of the, uh, usually means infinity. But it doesn't, huh? So it, it stops somewhere, that's the last term. Okay, so we need to understand that, okay, there is a certain pattern here. All right, so now the next thing you want to understand is that the numerator, if you, if you examine it closely, it is actually a countdown. Do you see that? That's a, that's a countdown, okay? Uh, the countdown goes like this. Uh, imagine n to be 10, and uh, of course, the, this will be 9, and then this will be 8, and the next one may be 7, and so on and so forth. But you also notice that you don't go all the way to 0, because this is obviously not 0. So the question is, when do you stop counting down? Right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then what? Happy New Year. So it stops somewhere. And you need to understand where it stops and how do you know where it stops. So it, it turns out that uh, this is R. The numerator will have R terms at the top. Meaning to say you count down R times will do. Okay? Now, about probably a few examples will be much easier to understand. Let's take a look at this one. 6C2. 6C2 will be, of course, the denominator is simple, the easy one, right? That will be simply just 2 factorial. The numerator, you understand that it starts with 6, and then you count down to 5, but you don't go to 4, you know? And then 3, 2, 1, no, 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 you stop at 5. Now, why do you stop at 5? Well, because this is 2, it means that the numerator must have only 2 terms. You count down 2 times, okay? Now, similarly here, now that you compare like that, you probably go like, oh yeah, it's pretty obvious, right? But like, uh, if this is 63, then this will be 3, 
All right, 3 factorial at the bottom, which is not hard to understand. It's just 3 times 2 times 1. The numerator will be 6, 5, 4. All right? You count down until 4 and you stop. Why do you stop? Because there are three, 3 terms up there. So far, so good. All right. How about 64? Now you can tell, right? Not hard. You probably can figure this out yourself. Okay. Now, uh, just so you know, you probably want to understand this a little bit better as well. Now, if you think about it, guys, what is 4 factorial? 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, the times 1 is really quite lame. Okay, you don't really need to write down the times 1. Okay, so, so it's just this. Now, if you think about it, and you realize that A, doesn't this cancel with this, and this cancel with this? And if you rewrite it, you end up with 6, 5 over 2. Doesn't this look like this? Yes, it is. So if you can recall the first lesson that we talked about in binomial theorem before, the first thing that we learned was actually this idea called the Pascal's triangle. This Pascal's triangle is closely related to what we are talking about here. So uh, what's the feature of Pascal's triangle? There are actually two things you will need to know only, right? The first is it starts with one and with one. That helps us with the first term and the last term. And the other thing is that it is symmetrical. Correct? The numbers are symmetrical. Huh? Left side, right side. So you should understand that your 6C4 all right, is actually the same as 6C2. Okay? Because the, the again, the Pascal triangle is like the second and the second from the, the, the second from the last and so on and so forth. All right, generally, uh, if you want to look at the general version, it looks a bit like this. NCR is equal to N, N minus R. And go like, uh, it looks kind of uh, confusing. But the whole idea is that these two add together, you get n, that's fine. And that means these two add together, you get back to 6, that's fine. Okay? So in some sense, if you, if you can now understand that, you can understand, okay, 10c2 will be the same as, the same as what? 10c what? 10c8, right? Yep, and you can try to check using your calculator if you like. Okay? So, so when there's 10c8, you don't really go and do this, right? You know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Right, you count down. Actually, you just have to do 10C2, the, the easier version. Okay? Alright, now anyway, so now that we understand how to use the formula, right, which is right here, right? Okay, so, so this is the formula. Alright, NCR, we have R factorial at the bottom, at the top is a countdown, and we count down at R times, that's all. Okay? And of course, if R happens to be a too big a number, you can actually use a shortcut, which is the mirror image. That will help us a little bit, right? So for example, if I want to find 10C8, this is a bit tedious, so I just do 10C2. La which is just what? 10 times 9 divided by 2, 45. I mean, I don't have to do this. I know the answer is 45. Okay? Now, then that begs the next question, which is, oh, Mr. Tang, that's quite cool, but why do I need to know this? Like, you see, I have my calculator. I mean, 10C8, so what, right? I mean, I just have to press 10C8, 45. Okay, I don't care. I mean, I can do the mental calculation, 10 times 9, 90 divided by 2, that's 45 also, right? But what for do I need to do that? Well, it turns out that the, obviously there's one reason only uh, that why we want, want to know this formula well uh, in order to do binomial. And that is, sometimes you can't use a calculator. And the kind of times that you uh, can't use a calculator happens when, when you deal with a, when you're dealing with a binomial question whereby the power is unknown. Okay? And there are such questions. There are. Alright? So the moment you see the power is unknown. Then you realize that you can't use a calculator and therefore you better know this. Okay? But this kind of question is not common. Like I say, it's like 10% out of the, all the questions that you, you will see. Alright? Uh, so this is also considered the harder versions of the question. So far so good? Now, if you know these three skill sets well enough, your binomial theorem should be pretty smooth sailing, I dare say, okay? So, uh, what is left to do is, of course, well, the practice. So, uh, come, I don't think they are uh, arranged in any particular order, like simpler to harder, but usually the questions at the back are much harder than the first few, okay? So, come, let's try this. 